welcome back to a slightly croaky uh, Loaded Landscapes this month. Um, slight change of plan. I had a video uh, tutorial planned out for this month for you. But in the last 10 to 14 days, um, Adobe have released um, Adobe Lightroom 2015. And uh, it's quite a nice update. Um, I don't get overexcited when uh, new releases are announced. Um, but this one, I was really impressed because they've all now uh, allowed you to uh, merge HDR and produce panoramics from within Lightroom room and they're actually very very good so I thought we would um, do a quick tutorial on these two new uh, really cool features so the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got the latest um, update to Lightroom um, and uh, I'm going to show you first of all the, um, the panoramic feature um, open in front of me are th uh, three images that I shot back in 2016 I was doing a lot of um, HDR panoramics with a 15 millimeter uh, wide angle lens which is very wide especially on a full frame camera and these were used to um, blend um, image based lighting onto CGI uh, produced cars in CGI packages so um, that's why they're done in such a wide with such a wide lens and uh, this is one I shot on a beach um, down in, in uh, southwest England in Cornwall and I thought I'd revisit these images because I've never used them for anything else apart from what they were designed to be shot for which was for the uh, CGI uh, usage um, but I thought we'd do a little test with the new um, new panoramic feature within Lightroom using these so bear in mind you know there's a lot of distortion on these and uh, that's one of the reasons I was really impressed with this feature because it's made a really good job uh, of producing a, a nice panoramic from them so we've got the three images open here um, first thing I would say is um, it's not worth going and doing too many adjustments on these images some of the adjustments you do will carry over into the final image but some won't so I believe things like using graduated filters or radial filters and adjustments like that will get discarded so don't spend a huge amount of time messing around with the images um, on these so these are the uh, the raw files I'm going to right click on them I've selected all three right click on them and down on your contextual menu here you'll find um, photo merge okay you've got two options HDR and panoramic I'm going to choose panoramic and then you'll get this new dialog box pop up and there's a couple of things uh, you've, got, well, you've got a few options here um, I would um, first of all the easy route is to select or to select projection and you'll let Lightroom decide which is the best option for the images that you've provided it with um, if I just turn it off a minute let's just have a look through these three images um, let's go to um, spherical first that's what uh, Lightroom has already selected spherical is actually best for 360 um, images um, if you're using 360s um, and these images that I shot were shot on a very wide lens so this may well be my best option for this particular panoramic however it's always good to have a little look through the options the next one is cylindrical and we'll have a look at that one that's produced more of a square image uh, for the this one is best for very very wide uh, lenses and from what I can gather it takes the kind of middle of the picture uh, as the source and then adjusts the rest of the image around it and makes the adjustments needed to make it look um, as normal as possible uh, the third option is perspective that also does the same sort of thing it takes it bases its calculations on the center images and then adjust the edges uh, to match um, now if I turn off the I've got the auto crop um, box ticks here at the moment which does exactly what it says it basically crops out any of the extra uh, data around the images the white area so if I turn it off and scroll through these you'll get a better idea what uh, Lightroom is actually doing there's a cylindrical and there's a spherical Okay, so have a little toggle, toggle through these. It will depend on your on the image that you provide in Lightroom and the um, the lens it's shot on. Um, and if any doubt, I would suggest just clicking the auto select button, and the auto crop will obviously clean up any of the extra white areas around. So very easy. So you know it might be worth go, going through these. It might not. Once you do that, 
just click on merge and what will Lightroom will do now he will merge these three images together but it also will merge them in to a raw file which I think is, is really really powerful and it, it'll add it to your catalog so if you scroll down now you'll find the uh, image in question which is this one here and it will always end in the pano um, abbreviation okay so if I click on there now we've basically what we've got is a raw file uh, made up from your three images so fantastic um, really impressed with that and so we now can go through and just process it like we normally would um, a normal um, raw file so that's made a really good job of that and uh, I haven't had to leave uh, Lightroom to do it so that's our first um, look at these new features the next one we're going to look at is HDR so the next feature we're going to look at is the HDR feature within Lightroom um, and there's obviously several ways you can do uh, HDR you can use Photoshop which um, you know I've had some good results from or you can use independent software like Photomatics again which I've also had good results from I've got a bit of love love hate relationship with all of them sometimes they work really well sometimes they don't work quite as well as would like so um, and, and sometimes I'll res resort to manually blending my images within Photoshop so it's always a bit of a tricky one for me um, HDR this one again like the panoramic um, I was quite impressed with and so let me just take you through uh, this particular one um, so I've got um, three four five images open here all DNG raw files of um, a coastal scene I'm gonna select all of them again same rule applies with the panoramics don't go into making too many adjustments because a lot of them won't get carried over um, so I'm gonna select all of them I'm gonna right click again and go to photo merge but this time we're gonna select HDR again the new dialog box opens and there's a few features in here which you may be familiar with uh, things like auto align and auto tone up to you whether you use those there's no reason really why you wouldn't use auto align and that would help try to align all the images together I use a tripod for these pictures but even so things can move a little bit so um, worth again I, I would recommend probably using auto align auto tone again personal preference try it with try it without but um, auto tone will try and get you in the ballpark of a, a balanced picture so I'm going to leave those two um, checked um, deghosting this is where in between different frames if you've got movement um, the software will try and pick out one of the images to base the um, the content on. Um, in this image, the problem we're going to have two problems. I've got moving moving water C, so each wave is going to be slightly different. I've also got quite a few um, uh, what are they seagulls. I went, mine went blank yet, again a second there. We've got seagulls in some of the shots, and so again they're going to be um, in different areas and different frames. So again go through there is a box here which is show ghost overlay and it's going to show you the areas that it's going to try and de-ghost so there's it, the image with none so it's not going to try and de-ghost anything in the picture which for this image might not be a bad thing because like I said I've got quite a few things that are moving um, in the picture we've got um, a low setting just wait for that to uh, preview um, and then we've got a medium and a high again it will all depend on the individual image that you're using if you've got a picture and there's maybe people moving a couple of people moving in shots um, this might make a good um, and good job of removing those um, so for this one I think I'm gonna leave it on non because it's trying to blur out uh, some of the the um, the seagulls and stuff and uh, we're probably quite um, easy for me to go in and manually retouch that if I wish to so I'm gonna leave it on non and uh, click merge and once again it's going to create a single raw file from all of these pictures all these files and add it to your catalog and here somewhere should be our image and again like just like the pano it will end in HDR we can click to open that and again we can go in 
and uh, just process it like a, a normal raw file. So again, very powerful. Bit of dust in here and spots on my sky I need to take care of. Um, I would also probably come in with this one and maybe crop it down and uh, do some of the adjustments. But I'm not going to bore you with all that because it is literally like processing a normal raw farm. This is the, the great benefit uh, to this is that you're doing it all from within Lightroom. You're keeping the quality there because you're, you're retaining a DNG or, a, uh, or whatever your raw file format is. The only slight difference with this if you use if you're using HDR for say something like CGI rendering for re um, creating image based lighting sometimes you want a 32 bit file for that very reason and uh, that won't happen within Lightroom for what I can gather you'll need to do the traditional export into Lightroom into Photoshop sorry and create your HDR from there where you've got the option to keep the file format as a 32-bit uh, file so a little bit techy there uh, that's got very limited usage like I said um, so you probably won't even worry about that so uh, I think Lightroom is a great uh, place to do your HDR and also your panoramics now. So I would recommend going in and having a play with that and um, seeing what you think. But as I said, I was quite impressed. Anyway, I'm sorry about the croaky voice, but hopefully next month that all will have cleared up. And um, I hope to catch you on the next video. Cheers for watching.